In this lesson, we're going to take a look at the function evaluation operator, that is, the open and close parenthesis. Now, this operator can be used for a lot of different methods, but in this example, we're going to build a matrix class and use the function evaluation operator as a way to index into the matrix. So here's our matrix class. The data is a built-in 2 by 2 matrix, so there are four elements, indices running from 0 to 1 in the x direction, 0 to 1 in the y direction. And we're going to have two versions of the function evaluation operator. We're going to have a const version and a non-const version. So here's the const version and here's the non-const. So why do we have two definitions of the same operator? Well, this is a common technique. The idea is that you have a read-only version and one that to change data. So the operator is going to return a reference to the T type. This is templated on type, and the template parameter is T. So it's going to return a reference to T type, the ij or x y element in the array, or a const reference to the T type, and a const version of the function. Again, the x wyth element in the array. And here are definitions of those functions. So you can see it's simply returning the x wyth element. One's const, one's non-const. Okay, to demonstrate how this works, here's our main function. We're going to declare a stream connected to a data file that's going to contain four pieces of data. And we're going to create a matrix M, templated on double. And we're going to go through a nested for loop running from 0 to 1, 0 to 1. And we're going to read in from the file the values to be written into the members of that matrix M. Then we're going to output a particular element in that matrix. Here is the pertinent parts of the main, the nested for loops. and our definitions of the two overloaded function evaluation operators. Let's go through a code trace and see how this is going to work. First of all, our input file stream connected to the input.dat file, and here's our file information there, the data, and our matrix M. We jump into the for loop, I is 0, J is 0, and then I'm going to read into MIJ. Now because I'm going to write into this matrix, the compiler realizes that it has to choose the non-const version. So it jumps into the code for this function with x equal to 0, y equal to 0. So it's going to locate the 0, 0th element of the matrix and return that so that we can write from the file the value 1.1 into that location of the matrix. Now j jumps to 1. Again, I need to access element m01. Because I'm writing into it, I'm going to use the non-const version of the operator. I need to return m01. And I will then write into that particular location from the input data file 4.2. So j is now at its max. I increase i to 1, and j is 0. And again, I'm going to write into m10. Uh, so I use the non-const version. I return the appropriate element of the matrix. And I read from the file 9.3, and that gets written into the appropriate location in the matrix. I then increment j. And again, I need to access the 1 one element of the matrix. I use the non-const version. x is 1, y is 1. I return the 1 one element of the matrix to be read into from the file. And I read 5.1, place that in the 1 one element of the matrix. And I'm done with both for loops. And then I go to the next statement, which is the cout statement, and put into the output buffer the new line, and then m01. Now, because I am simply going to access or read that element of the matrix, the compiler realizes that a 
const version of the accessor is to be used. So it's going to jump into the code for the const version of the overloaded function evaluation operator passing in 0 and 1 for x and y. And I'm going to find then the 0 1th element of the matrix, which is 4.2, and return that. And that is 4.2 that's put into the output buffer. And then, of course, when the buffer is flushed and the output is sent to the output device, I get 4.2 and a new line, new line. That's the end of that code. So one thing you should note about the function evaluation operator, and this is something that makes it different from the bracket operator, that you can have as many parameters as you wish with the function evaluation operator. With the bracket operator, you can only have one parameter. Actually, quite oddly, you can define it with more than one parameter, but only one parameter is going to be used. And so you get results or your definition for the bracket operator is kind of misleading. It's nice to have the function evaluation operator because then you can use it in many different ways as you see in these examples.